All right, everybody, welcome to the uh, Art and Design Committee meeting. It's starting at 9 o'clock. Um, we have a quorum. I'd like to call the meeting to order and get started with our agenda. You'll find on our, we only have an agenda today, no pictures. I think the most important part we're going to have today is Jack is going to be on point to describe for us the approval process and presentation. We have a number of projects that are ready to go. And all we really need to do is get the funding completed. And I'd like to see that done as quickly as possible, probably within the next week. OK, meeting's been called to order. We've established a quorum. All right, I'd like to uh, bring to your attention we need to do the next thing is approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Approve. Move it to approve. Judy Ostrom, do I have a vote? OK, meeting's approved. I want to give a thank you to Judy Estrom for taking over while I was out having periodontal work done. Um, I think I'd rather have been here, but, you know, it was an enjoyable experience. All right, next on our agenda, and here, Jack, you're up. I know you don't have a, an official presentation, but you're prepared. Um, right now, what we really need to do is get this approval process for the funding. We have a number of projects here that are ready to go, and a couple of them we have to go over budget like by $2,500. So I really need to know what do we need to do and who do we need to see in order to get this done. So Jack, you can take it away. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, one question I have for the, you said you're over budget $2,500? Apologies on that. Uh, yes, as you said on the blue waves, we are currently bid at 7047 and I think our authority is 5000 So do you have or the under authority? Under 5000 Under 5000 right. right. The max we can go is 5000 Correct. Per project. Correct. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't fully understand the, the complexities of, of going out and looking for items that are capital uh, improvements. So we, I don't see the approval process of going for the 2500 alone. Um, I know capital pro uh, projects are approved in advance and allocated for. Uh, items that are under 5,000 don't have the same scrutiny or line items as heavy as things that are five and over. Um, so as far as the, the process of getting something that's five and over, I think we would have to start with um, talking with our facilities manager, accounting, and our general manager. Uh, for items that are under 5,000, I, th I think it's as simple as fi fully fi uh, filling out the um, Art and Design Committee project initiator uh, procurement form that we have. We go through, fill out this form. We get all the details, the who, what, where's, and why's. And then the next step is going through and getting sign off from starting with myself, the facility supervisor. The next would be the facility manager, which is Russ Boston. And if applicable, we would need the environmental service manager signature. That's Todd Patty. And those things would be required if it, uh, there's irrigation involved, landscaping, trees, that sort of thing. Um, then after that, we'd want to go through and get the signature of the general manager. And if, and if um, applicable, the um, committee chairperson for properties committee. There are certain things that affect the structural integrity, um, uh, things that are permanent to a facility um, is typically scrutinized uh, monthly by properties committee. And then there's on here also the governing board president uh, on this approval process that was uh, designed by our committee. Questions from the Yeah, committee? Jack, we revised that procurement. Do I have a copy of that? Okay. Apologies. Uh, we looked at it in two ways. One was what we needed to do on this side and the approvals that we actually needed afterwards. All right, so we can include that, which is the document, which is the signatures. Correct. Which is what was there. The question that I was asking is, 
what is the process by which we have to go through it. Now, if I understand what we've just, you've just explained, we have a facilities manager, we have um, the supervisor, which is you. Correct. We have the environmental supervisor if it needs to go through for environmental supervision, which I would need to know what causes that. Then the general manager, the property manager, and possibly the governing board. All right, that's for $2,500? Correct. Okay. So that what, what, what would be an estimate of how long that takes? Uh, if you get everybody in the same room at the same time, it could be a matter of five minutes. Else, okay. So how would I know if something needs to be triggered for the environmental supervisor? Um, I thought I explained if we have irrigation involved. Okay. Like, well, let's take as an example here. We have the blue wave, as we're calling it. Right. Now, with the blue wave, that's going to be attached to the wall. Okay. Would that have to go through the environmental supervisor? In that case, it would not. It would not. Okay. So, all right. So to get to $2,500, I need your approval, right? Your the, sign off. On correct. That. But this wouldn't be the blue waves still. So. Why wouldn't it be the blue waves? That's like 2040 Because that comes out of a completely different fund. Okay, here's I don't. Question. I can't operate out of the capital fund unless it's already been approved by the capital fund. Because the blue waves are over the 5,000 as okay. well as the um, decorative tiling. That is correct. So if this was something that was in my operations budget, I could go ahead and, and go through and order and purchase and procure and install all the things that are currently been budgeted out from our last year's budget cycle. There are certain things, um, for instance, we have uh, men's club flooring. That's something that's going to go happen next year's budget cycle. It's already budgeted for, already planned, it's gonna roll through. It comes out of capital budget. If it's something like hanging um, canvases in uh, R.H. Johnson, lobby I budget for it last year I I find it I procure it and I inst get it installed by facility maintenance or myself I'm op we're working in the operations budget and I can't mix the two I can't go all the way up to 499 then borrow a thousand from capital so there's a direct distinction of which funds fund which projects so Jack are you saying that to get the money, the twenty five hundred, it'd have to be in your capital budget for next year. Correct. All right. I have a question on a follow up question. It's my understanding that funds thirty thousand dollars was the number that was thrown out to us has Correct. been allocated for the art committee. Correct. All right. So that money has already been allocated. Correct. It's in the capital budget for this budget. Correct. Correct. So therefore, we wouldn't need any kind of an approval for that money. You, there's still approval processes. So um, I can give you more examples, or we can just talk about that money specific. That money specific. So that uh, 30000 that's allocated for art and design still cannot exceed 5000 in five years. Cannot exceed 5000 in what? In five years. Is that per project? Correct. So we could still have two projects going over 5,000 as long as we don't go over the 30,000 budget, correct? Correct. Jack, could I ask you to write these names down for us? Yeah, absolutely. Let, for... me, let me get a um, um, names and phone numbers for every one of these individuals on here. Okay. And you know who start for systematically capital, going for the through. capital budget and then for yeah. the non-capital budget oh okay fair Please. enough so okay now once we have these names how do we submit it do we submit it Just, via email do we submit it uh, hand carry it how do we do it either or so um, the rec center still is uh, very committed to using paper copies which is unfortunate in some circumstances where sometimes they have to come from facility to facility to facility um, but Rec Centers has come a long ways, and there's many forms that we can do electronically with PDFs and sign and, and move forward. Um, we're kind of in uncharted territories. I've never seen uh, a committee operate so heavy in operations, so this is something we kind of have to work through as we go, I feel. Um, this is a new form that's first time for the Rec Centers, so I think there's a little bit of a learning curve in finding out um, how the process works and the more we do it I think the more proficient we'll get with it okay. a couple questions Jack 
Um, you mentioned uh, one project, 5,000 within five years. Did I get that correct? That's correct. Okay. And the Blue Waves is one project. Correct. Even if you were to try to dice it up, say, six months later, compete the other half? Correct. It would still, under my understanding, uh, under the accounting principles that we use today at the rec centers, it, would, it wouldn't be consistent in a one project. Um, it would still be completing a one full project. For instance, if it fell off and we had to replace it, um, we wouldn't replace it back in two projects. You know, there's, it just gets in a goofy territory. There, they like to see uh, fine lines where they can of what qualifies as capital um, and then what does not. And then the procurement form has already been submitted on this project, correct? I believe it's been filled out. I personally have not seen a copy of it yet. A uh, question on that as well. Like yeah. we take the blue wave. Yeah. We have two bids. Right. Is that sufficient or do we need three? So under, under my practices that I've used for um, all capital, um, whether it's trying to procure a carpet cleaning machine or um, and some other piece of equipment, I have to go out and get a minimum of three bids. Um, accounting would prefer to see a fourth bid if possible. And with those, um, like for like is, as, as close as possible, um, we use a form called a bid ex expl explanation sheet. And it basically um, calls out the, the vendor, basically the scope, and then the cost. And then it also goes to explain uh, why one was granted and the others were not. And oftentimes it's common um, practice to see on there saying this would be a great second option. For instance, if something fell through with the first one or next year as it comes up, you can work out some of the details that they just missed the mark for some reason. That helps. I have a quick question. Um, when you go through the process of getting the various signatures and approvals or non-approvals, is that done, is it facilitated from person to person to person, or do you have a form that they check off and they make sure it gets to the next person, or do we take it along the train? So, new process. Um, this is the first time we'd be going through the, the procurement form in its entirety. So this would probably be something that you guys would come up with. I'm good either way. Uh, we currently use both methods and ways that we procure several signatures and series. Uh, we currently have um, um, forms that are filled out on a daily basis with the rec centers that require multiple signatures. And those will, are shot from person to person, um, usually um, by courier or handing off. So if one of my leads um, has, a, has an incident, it gets to me. I then um, typically will hand deliver it to my manager and my manager will then deliver it to the next course. Um, there's times where I'm out of town and things have to move quickly on certain things. For instance, if there's a slippery floor that needs to be addressed then, there, and that day, sometimes they'll shoot directly up to the top and then we get the signatures after the fact. Quick question. On this. Yes. Okay. Let's take the blue wave. I'm using this as an example because I'm not picking on anyone. No, fair enough. Okay. All right. We have two bids. We don't have three. All right. Is there an exemption process where we said, hey, we only have two bids, we can't get a third one? So I haven't personally been involved in this specific instance, but I understand that um, you still have to go out and request a third bid and show that they did not come back with their bid. There has to be filled out um, the reason why the, the third bid was not made. I think, in my opinion, it especially with the Blue Wave, it's a custom-designed project. Right. Done specifically for us. Correct. And I don't know if we can get that many bids, being that it's custom and designed. Shelly, maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, I, I reached out to many, many companies, you know, and I only got back, I only heard back from three. Two gave me bids. One just kind of never heard back. And I was uh, so happy with this first bid. Right. And because I've seen his work online, it's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, it's a big company. They do great work. So I was like, it's a reasonable price. 
The other one, the next one up was 10,000 more. And this was a builder that it wasn't even his right. main job. This was something right. that he does on the side. And I was like, oh. So I sort of stopped right there. So it's my understanding that these bids, this bid process is public information and with all transparencies of who's awarded bids and why they're awarded bids, they like to see a specific discipline when dealing with these types of um, items. If that was provided, would we be able to forego the third bid for that particular project? Then you would need to show reason why you did not get the third bid. You would go out to a company that should be equally qualified and show that you made um, uh, two attempts or more attempts that to receive that bid back from them. Then you can put in your documentation, here's my email showing that they did not uh, provide a bid. And then that goes in with your bid explanation of why they were not awarded the bid. Well, they didn't come back with one. But it showed that you, in, in all transparency and honesty, went out and tried to find the best, um, the best bid for that project. All right, so that's, that's showing a good faith effort. Correct. So, all right. As long as you follow those steps, I think you can get past that hurdle. So, all right. We send out for the blue waves, and we don't get a response. So we can demonstrate that we've done email. We Correct. Maybe that's about it. That's yeah, I would do a follow-up and send, hey, uh, I don't know if this, mm -hmm. I checked my, my spam folder. I did not see, or are you guys not interested? If you still don't get a response, then you just have that documentation with your bid packet. And then that bid packet goes directly from um, the committee to um, the CFO's office or a purchasing agent up in the county. And then all gets cataloged, logged, and then published. Okay. So, all right, if I understand you correctly, we have a bid approval of three bids. And then we need a bid explanation form if we can't get to three. The bid explanation form comes with your bid packet okay. no matter what. And we get that bid explanation form from? From accounting. From accounting, it would be right. what, Cliff Swan or someone? I, I, that would be a good resource, I believe. Okay, so we need to get that form. And then once it's all pulled together, we drop it off at your office. We can, the, Since I'm the first name on that, if you guys still want to go with that mm -hmm. process, um, yeah, I would be the first one. And then it's my responsibility. We can start the clock saying, all right, let's go get these other signatures if we can. So if it's under 5,000, we don't need bids? Don't need bids, correct. Maybe I should have them bid it at, you know, what can you give us for $5,000, $4,999? Do we just take two waves off? You know, you know, I could do that. I mean, I, I you know, this was just an arbitrary design. It's could, an option if you wish to yeah, go back. Yeah, I can ask and see what we can get for that. Okay, so that, that brings us to the next point. It's under $5,000. Okay, so the committee fills out standard form, which you have Correct. there. How many signatures are required? Just yours? And my, my manager's as well. That's it, just two. Yep. That makes sense. I think even with the decorative tile, I could maneuver them to come down $200 that they're over. <laughs> <laughs> I love politics. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So, okay, any other questions for for Jack? Uh, Jack, what's can you get us Cliff's phone number or a way to contact? Yeah, him? I can. I can get phone numbers. And um, from your perspective, what do we need to be more efficient to work with you to understand the process and the system and how to make this work for us so we're more efficient? We can get the stuff done. I honestly think the more that we work it seeing how we're kind of, it's a very new process to this. And I, I honestly think the more we get experience with it, the more efficient we could get with it. Do we have to spend the budget's money by a certain date for this year? Or can it carry over? It, it does not carry over. As it a matter of fact, all over. projects to, that are budgeted for this budget cycle have to be completed before next year. So completed. you can't even have a carry, correct. So you can't even have a carryover. If we were to go live and get those um, uh, waves start to installed, they have to be, um, project has to be inspected and uh, fully billed before the next um, 
budget cycle. And we typically have to do that by month. Now there are certain reasons why you can't do that with a carryover month, but typically you want all invoicing done end of month, end of month, end of month. So more importantly is end of budget cycle, end of budget cycle. Which is? Uh, July 1st. Okay, now that brings up another question. We have $30,000 in budget, all right? How much of that's been spent? Uh, we would have to uh, get a, an actual from accounting. Okay, so. And it was my understanding it was divvied up uh, $7,500 per location. $700 per location. Correct, so by facility. So you have Palm Ridge, mm -hmm. you have Beardsley, you have R.H. Johnson, and you have uh, Coons. I'm not sure about that, really. Okay. It's good questions we have for you. Yeah. Yes. So? Um, it is in the budget in the four different locations, but I don't see that that's a problem. I think that can be transferred and lumped together. I think it was just for accounting purposes they felt that maybe that was clearer. Be nice to have that information. Okay. So um, starting July 1st, uh, there's a new budget. Correct. And you inferred earlier that uh, a project like Blue Waves that was at coming at 7,500 is under the operating budget and that this is a new sort of um, territory for us to walk through because Correct. everything tends to go through capital budget and right. going through operating budget. So do, is this an opportunity to us to kind of really learn uh, how to make this become more efficient and work better since we have July 1st right around the corner and guide us a little bit, please. Yeah, I, I would agree with that statement. I think this is a, a good learning opportunity for all of us. Um, like I said, this is new to committees as far as I know. Um, I know other special committees have put together for specific purposes, and this is the first that I'm aware of that was kind of granted a budget to fix issues. Um, Beautification being the issue that this one was was working on so very Uncharted waters. I've had to consult with general manager and accounting with with kind of the budget stuff and um, I think we just got to work through it So uh, I think we try to get done as much as you can before July 1st and then be ahead of the ball game July 1st for all projects you want to get done for the 22 23 budget cycle so you're assuming this committee will continue? Correct. You know, I don't see how we could get the waves done. I mean, everything and by July 1st. I just don't, you know, really? Well, let's just see if we can get it in a pipeline, get it moving. Yeah. Oh, Shelly, quick question on that. Did we find out what their um, availability was when we went out and bid this or no, the because, time frame it like would take? No, my first bid was in January. Right. You know, so... Right. I got him to rebid it, uh, you know, about a month ago. So um, I'll talk to him, and I'm also yeah. going to ask him to bid it at four nine nine nine. What they could do with that? Yeah. Bid. The next thing I would do too is when going out for bid is get get specifics uh, how long it's going to take because there could be disruptions to the facility. Like if they have to put scaffolding up, you're going to have to move chairs out of the way because there's no closure scheduled for R. H. Johnson. So there's a lot of specifics you want to get the. Uh, when they start, how long it will take, uh, what kind of supervision will they need on site, um, clean up, they need dumpsters. You know, there's all these little fine details when you're in operations that you always have to be on top of or you have a, an, an incident or an issue that, uh, you know, will create, you, will create other uh, problems. Okay. Right. So those, those details like the, the scaffolding, how long, where, you get out in front of those come July 1st, you could hit the ground running, per se, as opposed to, like, oh, now what do we do? You know, but there's some details we have to be in. Well, I was also thinking, you know, if you were installing metal waves in the summer here, you know, it's really hot. You can always <laughs> do it at night. <laughs> yeah, at night or wait until October right. or something. Right. Jack, the art club, and specifically Rhonda Hom, who's heading this, has, uh, they've narrowed down to two uh, works of art to be put up in the Kuhn's courtyard, Van Gogh choice and a, a Renoir choice, I believe. But um, 
it's not been decided yet, but they, I've got the price for the wood, depending on which one they chose to do, but they're not gonna start it now because of the summer and people leaving until next fall. So how does that get handled? So I would, I would request that that would go through this approval process as well. And one of the things um, before you, I would try to green light a project like that before it starts signing off on buying product and um, for wood and what have you, is I would have together option A, option B, what this community art project looked like, get everybody to agree on it, and then start you know, making the purchases and, um, and start procuring the things needed for the full project. I know that there's probably a lot of stuff out there in the ethereal about what it could look like. Those are some of the things that we need to have, you know, a blueprint for um, just for me to sign off or someone else to sign off on saying, yeah, let's let's let them go do that. And then you get the project and go, whoa, who signed off on this? So really good to have um, get the picture of what it's supposed to look like, even even if it's as simple as a napkin sketch, at least you have something that somebody can see and say, yes, let's go forward with this, as opposed to say, here's a blank canvas, just do something cool. Yeah, I have that. And these were okay. all done by Van Gogh or whatever. Right. So, and they, they buy the giant posters and they divvy it up. So it's it's an actual replica right. of, of I, it. So. I'm just saying it'd be good to see it on paper, see what it looks like. Yeah, I have then, that. Okay. Okay, so my takeaways from this are, are as follows. Number one, um, Shelley and Judy are going to reach out to the uh, vendors and see if they can drop the price below five thousand dollars. In which case, then it's just we take it to you, your supervisor. Boom, we get things rolling, right? That's okay. correct. Yep. You want three bids, and if we can't get three bids, we just have to show good faith effort at establishing three bids. Correct. All right. So, as far as as an example, not picking on Shelley. Shelley does a great job, and she's my secretary for right now. <laughs> I don't want to make her angry. Um, I'll write bad things. Okay. Um, all right, so she'll reach out because she's already has two bids and just reach out and if she gets rejected, no one responds, then we've already got the three and we can walk this process through. Okay. But if we get it down below 5,000, we don't need the three bids. Right, the then we, will do it. right, right. Yes. exactly. So then we have that vendor, then we, I come to you or whoever, we present it to you, you take it to your, super, we take it to your supervisor, he signs off on it, boom, we're good to go. Right. And for talk about efficiencies, to pitch it to myself and my manager at the same time, then you can get both signatures. You only have to pitch it once, and that would probably help with some of the... All right. That's, that seems like a way for us to go. And the other takeaway I have is that this is a new process, and it's probably the first time that a committee has actually had you know, the, the ability to, to spend funds. So the, the only concern I have is, is that I think in our conversation, you had indicated that there is no line item saying, Art and Design Committee budget item. It's in your equipment budget? That's correct. So how do we track that? So accounting does do monthly ends. They're usually a couple months behind as they're trying to pull in all their, um, all their billing processes. Um, it is a line item that does show up on my desk monthly, but it's in a pool of my other equipment as well. So like, in future meetings, we turn around to you and say, how much money is left? You can provide us with that data on a monthly That's basis. correct. Yep. Okay. Can we make a request to have that done? Can I give you... Uh, how much money has been spent? Yeah, let's look know, at... How much money we have, where, the, where we're... You know, from a cash standpoint, um, let's say the committee comes up and they say, gee, we got this great idea. It's $10,000. Wonderful. We're going to get the approvals. And we find out, well, we've only got you know 5000 left in the budget. Right. And also, we should also look at, with, with talking with accounting... Uh, um, Madam President, um, Sue Fitzsimons um, suggested that they were in a holding spot in each location that they could be lumped together. I've never seen that done before, so some clarification from uh, accounting would be nice on that too. And what would it take for us to get that clarification? I would have to have a, a meeting or a phone call with uh, with accounting. With Pete Vanelli or? I would say Pete and uh, Cliff, is, both yeah. would probably be a good not to put any pressure, when can we have when can we have that meeting? I'm not sure. I think uh, maybe from the the chairman's position would be a good spot to start that conversation with them. Okay. Um, so I, I have a list here of names that we need uh, and, and phone numbers. Um, okay. I don't know if that's the route you want to go, or if you have Pete's personal email. Um, I don't personally have okay. it yet. 
Okay. In Jack, not to put pressure on, but when can we get the listing of people we go through for a capital budget and under non-capital budget? You know, the, the supervisor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah. so that, that would all fall under that, that list that we talked about. But you are going to provide us, I think, with correct names. the names for all of or the yes. phone names and phone numbers. Yes, that, thank you. Act, that are accurate, correct. Thanks. And then we'll have a caveat on there for uh, uh, Cliff Swan as well for some of those things that we have to stumble through to figure out, like the uh, accounting. All right, so Richard was mentioning um, if this and Shelley gets it, the budget under five thousand, and uh, we can move forward, but you also said we need to uh, make sure that we've got how long, some other specifics so that we can coordinate with uh, the construction guys, right? Correct. And it also emphasize approval. Let me, let me, and then one, am I understanding when Richard asked that question, we could, if we got our bid today, came back right. under five grand, right. would it be doable before July 1st? If they could get started, completed and paid absolutely but keep in mind too i want to emphasize the approval process it should be going through uh the facility supervisor and facility manager so just keep that in mind we want that approval process uh, that's that all sounds good it sounds like as if we have some more clarity here um so our goal would be to keep it under five thousand. i, I want to circle back to the art club uh painting on wood all right so one of the things is what we discussed is we would purchase the wood for them and then give it to them, okay? And that helps with the 501c sure. issues that we have. Sure. And it's not saying they're cheating us or charging sure. us or sure. you know ripping us off or anything. It just simply says, hey, for the purposes of staying on the good side of the internal revenue or service, we're gonna do it this way. So one of the things I would recommend or maybe propose is that we're going to buy the wood for the um, um, art club because it's like buying paint in a pallet for someone to make a painting and then get started with the project. Right. So if I come to you and I say, here's $750 that we need to get this started, and then I come back to you for a second draft and say, we need another 1,000 to complete it. So is that a second approval process? Because um, I have no way right. of estimating how much it's gonna cost the artists. Right, as right. So long as we come in at the bottom under 5,000, I don't see the issue. My only concern is, um, I tried to stress earlier, to have a clear cut what it looks like, how long it's gonna to take to install, where it's gonna be installed. Um, I think the look, where, where it's gonna be and what it's gonna look like when it's done, is it permanent, is it temporary? You know, those sort of details just need to be provided before we go ahead and purchase the wood. Yeah. That sounds good. Jack, um, when we talk about installment, for example, for let's, let's say the art club thing, if we need um, the rec center to install it, is that possible? And how do we get an estimate for the charge for the installment of that? And also, we have some other uh, acrylic uh, alcohol pour paintings that um, we're interested in, in purchasing. And how do we get the price for the installment of these items also? So going back to the um, installation of the, of the art club, uh, are they being painted on wood, or is the canvas being? The art club is on wood. Okay. And all we purchase is the wood, and we install. Okay. And we have the vendor for that, so that's not a problem. As far as the alcohol uh, acrylic pour uh, that Cat Taylor uh, mm -hmm. went ahead and, and um, ordered, evidently, um, and they're lovely, by the way, we need to know how much it would call, cost to install or hang those pictures once we get once we get it approved. You know, once this whole thing gets approved. So I just need to know price for installment of those two projects. It's as long as the the installation doesn't require anything uh, real specific and, and specialized to it. Um, if you're using wall hangers or what have you, it wouldn't cost. It would be at no cost. Excuse me, Judy. Would you tell me about the alcohol ink thing? I don't know about that. Um, I've got pictures of it, but we didn't get them into the drop box. Cat had um, gone to that art, a, a private artist here in Sun City West, okay, and she'd ordered some large um, uh, alcohol 
poor marbling type pictures to go in various locations. And um, after she then resigned, um, we kind of put it on hold. And then when we sat back down, um, we, we had five projects that we wanted to pull through. And this was one of the ones that we thought was, it's so, they're like $400, you know, they're very, very limited. And to go into maybe um, um, locker rooms, she was thinking, uh, maybe a giant picture and the lodge, that type of a thing. Are these finished? Uh, we have one, well, the actual pictures are done, but what we have to do is get them put over onto aluminum. And one, one large one is done um, as a sample for us to see. And the reason we want them on aluminum is so that the elements, if it's in any area near the pool or a spa or a locker room, the canvases will not last. So we have one that we can look at as a committee and see what we think about great. it. Yeah. yeah. And then we could purchase more. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, that's one of the things is, I think, on our form, environmental issues. If something is aluminum, you don't want to impose, you know, put it next to something caustic, like you know, bromine or chlorine. Um, those things will destroy it in a heartbeat. All right. Um, do we have any other questions for Jack? Thank you, Jack. You seem to have been on the hot seat for most of it. Hey, no I, worries. That's what I'm here for. I hope you appreciated it. Yeah, for sure. That's good. Okay. Um, all right. So we've gone through the approval. Oh, um, what the other question I did have. Oh, yes, Jack. I will need to get together with you for the Dropbox. I can't seem to find anybody to explain to me how we get on the Dropbox. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe all I need is your name, email address, T staff, and they make you an approved um, add, delete, and view. Um, I believe there's other privileges. If you had more you had on this committee that didn't necessarily need to upload, but just to view them before, um, mm -hmm. that's also an option I believe you can do as well. I'll get with you after the meeting and we'll get that. You started. got it. No problem. All right. That makes sense. All right. Anybody else have any questions of Jack? Okay. Next item on the agenda is current projects. Right now on approval, I have them here. I don't have it on there. Um, we have three projects which we've talked about. One is the Blue Wave, the other one is the Coons Tile. And where we are with that status, as I understand it, we're going to go back for rebidding to see if we can get it below the $5,000 threshold. And we have the Art Club uh, painting on wood, which we've decided we're going to proceed with that one, as I understand it, um, and purchase the wood for the Art Club. Do I have a motion to make those purchases or do that? Motion. Motion. Okay. Second? Oh, I second. All right, vote. Everybody in, in favor of it? All right, then we're going to proceed with purchasing the wood. I'll make sure we get the forms to Jack here, and then we'll give the orders. Yeah, and then we'll look into the acrylic pour right. as a committee. Yes. And, and also, the art club wants our feedback. We would like them to do, and I do have pictures of that if I can get them on the Dropbox somehow, or I have them on my camera, or my phone, whatever. We could meet and talk about that informally. Yeah, well, my assumption is that on a Dropbox, it's just an administrative issue. It'll take about, what, 10 minutes? Or yeah, and in the meantime, you can shoot them over to my email, and I can drop anything in Dropbox as well. Okay, okay. Right. Now, I don't want to be the full manager of the Dropbox, but just to help the committee out, absolutely, I'll just um, drop it in there. It doesn't help you not be able to view what's all in there, but just to get it in there. I've had trouble where I've tried to put something in the Dropbox, and then it says, um, if you need to agree that we have access to your contacts. I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never made just been um, an option. I know a lot of times you can share stuff via Dropbox with your contacts. Um, one of the permissions maybe um, is that you can um, share specific components outside of Dropbox to individuals is why they ask for that permission. But as far as them just asking full access to my contacts, I personally haven't seen that. That's very good. Okay, and current status. Anybody have any other questions on current projects? All right, well, we have three. I would like to get at least another three in the process. The acrylic aluminum. We have the fourth one with the acrylic pour. Oh, yes. All right. Okay, the fourth one. And then, all right, which brings us to the next phase, identification of new projects. Does anybody have any ideas that we want to do, such as the quilts? I think there's been an opportunity here for us to reach out to the 
quilt club and be able to hang the quilts. Is anybody here on point or know anything about that? Well, we, we've got these hung up here uh, for now, and I'm not sure we're ready to do any more except to get these projects that we're trying to get done. That's so. Um, yeah, the, the uh, system for having these rotated, I believe, is every two months. Is that correct, Jack? That the club president and sometimes their board, when that two months is getting close to which ones will come up next. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a process. So the, these ones have to go back down to the rightful owner, and then we have the other ones come up. I don't personally hang these. I rely on maintenance staff, so there may be a lull in... Um, when they get installed. These ones I had in my possession before April 1st, but I just couldn't get them installed. We had, uh, I'd say, close to a dozen um, leaks that uh, maintenance has been, you know, putting out fires that kind of prevented staff from being able to get in doors and start hanging stuff up. Jack, do you think two months is too too quick for you to rotate them? Or is that, is that no, okay? No, it's, it's fine. It's okay. just... Um, yeah, getting the next ones lined up and getting these one back to the rightful owner is not the hard part. Uh, it just takes, there might be a lull in getting them installed depending on um, uh, maintenance uh, priorities at the time. Sue? Okay, and then the other project is there's a donation from um, a group of uh, women in Palo Verde Patchers who um, created an award-winning quilt uh, several years ago that says Lizard Acres, and it's speci specifically designed to have the different um, rec centers, you know, in the individual boxes uh, of their quilt, and it's a small size, uh, it's like a four by five, and they are willing to donate um, that quilt uh, for a permanent display, and one of the suggested locations was in the lecture hall here, um, above the table, so that when you would leave, you would see that up in that up on that wall um, as an option for a place to put it. Um, it originally was um, thought that we would put it somewhere near Lizard Acres once the new pub opened up, and um, so that was an option too. But um, there was difficulty in terms of where would that go and what would it look like. Um, so I think the group needs to decide if this is an appropriate location and it would need some um, framing and um, some plexiglass in front of it. And um, so the women um, that have um, donated the quilt are speaking with um, the uh, wood shop to see if they could get some prices on what that would cost um, so that the committee then can consider whether or not they want to do that. Um, so they're doing some of the legwork in terms of um, what it would cost to be able to uh, frame that and put some plexiglass in front of it. So that's the un other thing that's kind of pending, and this is kind of carrying over from the project that I had been working on before I kind of left the committee. And I'll turn that over to you guys now. Okay. That and I, I think I've given you, Richard, the um, name of the gal, Barb Shorty, who is the contact person Excellent. on that. Okay. So I guess I need a volunteer from the committee to... Uh... Jack? N not so much volunteering, but I do have some more supplemental information on that project. Um, the uh, treasurer for Palo Verde Patch is also the club president for the wood shop. So she and I had a discussion about this last week. I think where we lack sometimes on this committee and finding efficiencies and pushing projects forward is people dragging the project through each and every step. Um, you can always contact a club, they can give you some lip service, but it's another thing, beating on the door, getting products, getting things moved on to the next project. So just keep that in mind when we wanna tackle projects or take on certain tasks that um, it's gonna be this five and six, including me, when it requires some um, staff. We have to keep in mind that it always going to take uh, a project from beginning to end. It's, you can't just rely on handing it off to the club. I'm sure you guys have, have seen that at some point in, in dealing with this committee. Is They really have to grab it by the horns and drag it through all the processes. I'm in agreement. Um, okay. Okay. 
Um, I thought we had another project, the clock at the pool. We hadn't talked about that. Um, yeah, kind of but we didn't, it's, it's never got followed through with for this budget, I don't think. She never right. really so put it through. So should we add it as a well, new project? I have a question about that. Is that more of a facility type thing that should be bought by the rec center? I mean, it's not really, it's functional more than, sure, you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you want me to go and find the ugliest clock I could find? I, I, <laughs> I was thinking a, a nice alarm clock would be look really good on the wall, and then. Well, no, we can, I'm just we saying, can help you. If that's what he calls, that's what he calls the um, or the digital <laughs> alarm exactly. clock look. No, I, I think there should be some common ground. Um, there's things when this when this was concepted, there was some ideas that this committee could really work with facilities, and when we go in to do. Uh, new renovations that they could help pick out color palettes and um, work more hand in hand with uh, facilities would cover the cost of the paint, but at least there'd be some, some cohesiveness and at least uh, uh, some, some teamwork and trying to just work out some of the details that it's kind of hard for one person and one taste to really uh, iron something out. So the, the clock would, would be a cooperation, I'd imagine. With the cost of the clock, um, I couldn't justify getting that in my, my capital budget for next year. It's something that the committee, I could not know. Um, so we're looking at. Correct. So if you looked, correct. So if you looked Does at. Does Johnson have a clock now? No, we have one down at the tennis court that's really nice, but not. No, but on the pool, in the pool area, is there a, there's a correct, clock? Correct, but it's, there. Small, it's smaller than this clock right here. Is that going to just stay up until. The well, until it dies, or another three years, correct? So, yeah, that's that's a whole whole another ball of wax. Yes. Okay. So that one becomes long term. So this Palo Verde donation quilt, Sue, are they going to look for the plexiglass? Are they going to get it all ready for this committee to get it installed? Well, they were looking at the wood shop to do that, mm -hmm. so that was the inquiry. But before they do that, this committee would have to buy the supplies so that the club is not investing in the supplies through the process it just uh, spoke about. And then they would put it together, so as I'm, I understood it. So what I'm thinking is we, we have to have a volunteer to walk this through and I'll work with them. So, because we need coordination. I had a question about the purchase of the wood. Mm -hmm. Does the wood shop get a deal on wood? Yes. More than very so good de de deals. Hey, I'm willing to serve, Richard. You are. Um, I just walk me through it. So I'm a little new to it, but yeah, I'd be glad to. Okay, so we can give this in the mic. Uh, yes. So in answer to your question, a woodworking club gets deep discounts on wood. So I mean, it'd be impossible for us to go out any place else and get them for cheaper. I'm a member of the woodworking club. All right. Um, does anybody else have any ideas, ushers? Um, yeah, I did as a new member. Um, I went through the minutes from the last year and a half or so, and I did see the clock idea. Um, so, and I read the mission or value statement for the committee. And my understanding Jack, partly directed towards you, is that this is about, and partly directed to the committee, that this is uh, to sort of beautify Sun City West um, <clears throat> and to get community involvement through the clubs, woodworking, and patchers, et cetera. Um, so start with one idea, Jack. Is this appropriate, since we're still evolving somewhat as a committee, and designing who we are and what we're doing, what our vision is. Um, we're currently going through a water conservation effort globally in Arizona and in Sun City West and take Grandview Irrigation, which will be cropping back, I don't know, you know, a bunch of acreage on the perimeter of the golf course and putting in, um, you know, uh, uh, zero scape landscaping. Um, 
being from California where we went through that and saw the lowest bid contractors come in to residential lawns and barely put anything in, um, would the Art and Design Committee have a voice possibly? Could you see us being part of um, making sure that the landscape that's being put in around the areas to get down to the 90 acre waters would be something we could be part of? So that project, um, I believe, is already out to bid with a specific mm -hmm. scope. So when those scopes go in, they have specific size pots and plants where they go. I have a feeling um, that it's a very expensive endeavor and they're going to be looking to save money as much as possible. So some of the more grander uh, vegetation may also may not make the cut. I could be wrong and I could be speaking out of school on this, but I believe the motion is already, um, already started. So I don't know how much uh, this committee could add to that since it's already going. Is this something that would be cool to dive into and, and play with? I think it would it would be, um, but I, I wouldn't understand how that how that process would work. Um, if I may go back to the beginning of your comment, um, you're talking about reading the mission statement. We we're talking about beautifying uh, Sun City West. We're also talking about club buy-in. Right. Now, I don't. I don't get excited when the club is like, okay, we can do that. We can do anything, but we want you to provide the wood and you provide the idea and you provide um, the scope of everything. I, when I envisioned clubs getting involved, I saw talented artisans with ideas and they could help and have buy-in as opposed to just farming out the work cheap to them. I, I wanted um, the clubs to come together and cross club collaboration and put something out that they're proud of and fly for the whole community to see, not just something, not, not just to work with us. We take, you know, take ownership, help us, you know, put something out there that showcases your talent in the club. So I just wanted to add that. No, thank you. And I see the same vision. Appreciate that. Um, and then one other comment, since you opened it up for new ideas, um, I was going through the minutes and um, back on April 27th, Sue, um, mentioned asking the committees to look for projects, look for projects um, in the lecture halls, bathroom, theater, social halls, and other areas. Do we, have we done that? And we Mic's off. <laughs> we have, we have a, um, I don't know what you call it, a spreadsheet that Carl, uh, that we gave recommendations to and then Carl typed it up. I don't know if you have a copy of that. It doesn't sound like you do. So I will um, make you a copy of mine. Okay. Mike, anything else? Okay, I've, I've got a couple of ideas here. So shoot me down if you think I'm wrong. One, I wanna reach out to the metal club. Um, I think on the Stardust Theater, we've had some conversations there, you know, putting what is it, music notes, some type of uh, masks that are associated with theater or art and see if they can come over and come up with some ideas, okay? And see how they would work with that. Because then it gets involved, Shelly? Okay, so let's say we want the metal club to make something for us. What about the tax problem and all that? You know, in the beginning, before all that happened, we were gonna have the clubs do all kinds of things and then we kind of went, hmm? Yes, so back to my, my comment, having club buy-in, if they're purchasing and if they're investing, they, that we're, we wouldn't be in conflict. You know, it would be something, they've uh, made things, I believe, uh, this right here, they, they put together. You know, there's things that they do for this community that if we're not, it's silly just to ask them to farm it out for us, and have them have some buy-in, have some skin in the game. Um, and that's one thing I've seen one problem with this community committee is that we have all these talented clubs, but nobody's doing the work. No one's knocking on my door saying, hey, can we put this painting up in your lobby? Nobody has done that. Uh, we've got to do a lot of hand holding and a lot of begging. And we just don't see. We've got some some things rolling. We got the, the photography club has added um, a lot of art to certain locations that weren't there before. But for the most part, we don't have a lot of clubs knocking on our door to help us with this project. So just want to 
emphasize that. Jack, I, I agree with you, and um, I've noticed that, and I want to ask the committee. Uh, my sense is that if you went to the 100 or so charter clubs, they wouldn't know art and design from a bag of beans, frankly. Um, I was wondering if it's worthwhile for us to spend a little money and create a... And, you know, designating these clubs back as social clubs. Is, does the art club not have artwork that, or not art club, but does Clay Club not have stuff that they could donate to us? I mean, I'm not asking for their leftover scraps. I'm asking for some buy-in, some projects. Is 200 and something dollars going to break their bank? Are they not, would they not build a weather, something like that? Um, before Sue talks, there was, Kat brought up a question about um, quality of work. And that kind of stalled things a little bit. So go ahead, Sue. Um, I was just going to say that we got around that uh, financial issue by this committee and the money that was set aside, that that could be used to buy the materials. That's using some of the funds that we have. And the same way could work, and I don't understand why it did not, for purchasing clay for the clay club to make the um, totems. And the same thing should be able to work out for purchasing the metal that's needed for the metal club, um, the difficulty is with that process. Maybe, Jack, you can enlighten us. Yes, so uh, you know, we learn, we adapt, we move forward. Okay? That's about all we can do. Uh, to your point, I think we need to start inviting members of the uh, various clubs that do the crafts to attend this meeting so we can get their immediate feedback and maybe their buy-in. I think the pamphlet idea is a great idea. You do, you do too. And I think um, in talking with some of the clubs, they don't know how to access, how to see these meetings on YouTube. I mean, they don't know how to get there. So that could go in the pamphlet also. But I think that's a good idea. I, I think it's an excellent idea. And, and if Who just to, to I would be involved in that. And then um, I think the also important thing is to kind of boots on the ground, just show up uh, and say, hey, here we are, and here's some pamphlets, you know, at the core meetings that they have, and say, can we get on your agenda in five minutes and just talk about? Um, each uh, of the people that were on the committee, and we had maybe 10 at that time, did meet with each of the clubs, made contact with them to ask them how they might be involved and uh, what they might see that they would, you know, participate in and be a part of. And so we had a contact person from um, each of the, the rec centers that was dealing with the artists that were at um, that particular rec center. And I found that the people in the clubs were very interested in being a part of this. I found a lot of enthusiasm. In fact, I think we skipped one or two clubs. I did the organization through and didn't hear anything back and figured that you and I could meet her if she ever contacted us. But uh, my question is directed towards Jack. Um, Jack, I think the advantage of grant writing is if, say, for example, in the blue wave scenario, which is over budget, if we were able to get funding that covered the difference, the 2500 for you know in a grant writing, would that circumvent the process of trying to get all the process? How would, is, I, what's the, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. And, it's, and what I know about grant applications are typically not that quick. Turnaround. They're usually budgeted years out as well. So I don't know if we can mix the two. I think that would be another accounting question. But typically with a grant, in, in that case, it would be a match from the community, you know, something to show it. But I just threw it out as an idea to explore and see whether or not we can come up with something. I mean, who knows? If anybody's politically connected, we might be able to accelerate. Okay, just an idea. Or if there are any grant writers out there that would like to join us. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's to you listeners out there. Okay. So I guess, does anybody have any other new ideas? Okay. I would really like to get these projects launched off, get them done. You know, I, I want us to start showing some, what we used to call smoke. Okay, get it done. All right. So does anybody have anything else? 
Do we have any questions from the audience, either on the net or otherwise? Okay. All right, then. Um, we're adjourned. Our next meeting is... Okay. Our next meeting is May 4th, 9 o'clock here. I guess the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.